Algebra 2 honors, 13.1, lesson 13.1, right triangle trigonometry. So this is big stuff. Challenging mathematics, a lot going on. Trig is the study of right relationships among the angles and sides of a right triangle, although we will get outside of a right triangle fairly soon. So why is it one of the most used types of mathematics? Well, two big reasons. Number one, it really has a lot of real world applications. And number two, it's kind of, for me at least, it's the entrance to higher math. Calculus, things like that. It gets very complicated very quickly. It requires a broad base of information to do. You'll see what I, I mean. The first thing we'll start with is the classic SOHCAHTOA. And, and SOHCAHTOA stands for sine is so, cosine is ka, and tangent is TOA. And this is the magic of trig in that you have a triangle. It's got a right angle. You pick one angle and... Early on, I like to circle it. You label the other sides. Across from the right angle, of course, is the hypotenuse. Across from angle A is the opposite angle. And then next to angle A is the adjacent angle. Side, pardon me, I said angles, I meant sides. Opposite side, adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And... Any triangle with a right angle and this same degree up here, no matter how big, will have all these ratios be the same. Sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite side divided by adjacent. Now, cosecant, secant, and cotangent match up with sine, cosine, and tangent. So that cosecant is just 1 over sine. If it's 1 over sine, you could also say it's hypotenuse over opposite. And if cosecant is 1 over sine, then sine is 1 over cosecant. So we can do this all the way down. Secant is the flip of cosine. Cotangent is the flip of tangent. And so on and so on. Now, this is a bit annoying. Tangent goes with cotangent. That's obvious. They both have the word tangent in them. But sine should go with secant. It doesn't. It goes with cosecant. And cosine goes with secant. And by that, I mean they have letters that are opposite. It's very annoying. You need to memorize it just like you need to memorize Sokotoa. So let's, let's do a problem and see how we do it. Sine of angle A. Again, the first time I'll label them all. The opposite side. The adjacent side. So sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, three-fifths. Cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse, four-fifths. Tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, three-fourths. And that's it. That's all I memorized. Then I just remember that cosecant goes with sine, and it's the flip. Just take the reciprocal of three-fifths, you get five-thirds. Secant is the flip. Cotangent is the flip. And that's my horrible math word. Nobody else's. I like to say the flip, meaning we just flip it and there we are.
So that's it. That's really the big thing from this lesson to get how to do sine, cosine, tangent, and then flip it to get cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So now life gets complicated. Hopefully you know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If not, go look up the Pythagorean theorem and figure out how it works. But for this side here, we have to say that 2 squared plus, we'll call it x squared, equals 5 squared. x squared equals 25 minus 4. x squared equals 21. Square root of both sides. Square root of 21. So you have to do this step first before you can find sine angle B, hypotenuse, adjacent, opposite, sine of B is root 21 over 5, cosine of B, 2 over 5, tangent of B, root 21 over 2. Do all the reciprocals. Cosecant to be 5 over root 21. Rationalize it, we get 5 root 21 over 21. Secant to be 5 over 2. And as you get better at these, you'll start doing the rationalizations in your head. If you need to work that out, by all means, be my guest. So in a right triangle, in Pythagorean theorem, numbers that work without radicals like this radical here, numbers that don't give you radical are called triples. If you have memorized, it can really save you a lot of time. Triples are 3, 4, 5, and you can double them, 6, 8, 10, or multiply them by 3, 9, 12, 15, and so on and so on. You could divide them all by three, so one, four thirds, and five thirds would work. But other triples are five, twelve, thirteen, eight, fifteen, seventeen, seven, twenty-four, twenty-five, nine, forty, forty-one, and they go on and on. But just to give you a quick rundown, those are always there. Now We've also done, you should have done this before, where two triangles pop up a lot. 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time to go through the theory behind them, but 180 degrees make a triangle, so 45 plus 45 is 90 plus 90 is 180. So if you have a isosceles triangle and 12 on this side, you have to have 12 on this side. If you sit down and do 12 squared plus 12 squared square root, you'll find you get 12 root 2. So that whatever the sides are, they're the same. To get to the hypotenuse, you multiply by root 2. Here the hypotenuse is going backwards, so you divide by root 2. You get 8 root, 8 over root 2, which if you rationalize and simplify, you get 4 root 2. Of course, that's the same on that side. If you haven't seen 45, 45, 90 triangles, you should definitely go and do some research on them. And these are, are what you're going to get if you do them right. Now, the other triangles is 30, 60, 90 triangles. To understand them, take an equilateral triangle and chop it down the middle. And let's just imagine for a moment that the side, it's equilateral, so they're all too long. That means this would be 2, this would be 1, this would still be 60 degrees, this would be chopped to 30 degrees. And if you do x squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared, you'll find that x is root 3.
I call this the short side. This is still the hypotenuse. And I call this the long side. Find the short side, double it, and multiply by root 3. So for example, short side is here, long side is here, hypotenuse is here, double it, 12, multiply by root 3, 6 root 3. Over here I have long side, so we have to divide by root 3, 8 root 3 over 3. I rationalized it. And then once we have that, we multiply by 2, 16 root 3 over 3. Try these two on your own if you want to pause the tape. Since this goes to here by multiplying, this must be a 30, 60, 90. So to get from here to here, we multiply by root 3, 9 root 3. This is the long side again. So 7 root 3 over 3 and 14 root 3 over 3. Last thing, angle C, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. And I say, I want to know what the angle is here. So we look at it, we know the opposite, we know the hypotenuse. That means sine of C is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 20 over 26. So if we know that sine of C equals 20 over 26, we know that C equals sine to the negative first of 20 over 26. That's tricky. And I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm working off of memory. I believe that means that side is 50.3 degrees. That angle is 50.3 degrees. If we are to solve the triangle, that means we need to find this angle down here and the adjacent side. Well, we know these angles have to all add up to 180, or that angle C and angle E have to add up to 90. So this is 39.7. And then if we do anything, I mean, we could do tangent of 39.7 to get the adjacent. We do cosine of 50.3. Personally, I like to do the Pythagorean theorem. find that x is 16.6. .6. Notice I didn't leave it in radical form this time. When we're solving a triangle, we tend to just put decimals because we're going to get a lot of ugly answers. Fantastic amount of work, uh, information here. Make sure you practice. Good luck.